Okay, I see a couple people are on right now already. Um, so I'm going to get started actually probably about 12.03 or 04, because I know a lot of people sign in as they're getting settled at lunch. So if you can hear my voice, um, you definitely can feel free to go grab a drink or heat up your food because we will not start in the next one minute. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the presentation on Day in Sacramento, Take It to Your District. Um, this is Selena Copeland. I'm the Executive Director of Legal Aid Association of California. Um, and looking at the names of people who are attending, I don't think you guys have, have gone to the past Day in Sacramento, so I'm really glad that you're interested in taking Day in Sacramento to your district. Um, the actual presentation today will be quite short. I think it's probably about 15 minutes of content. And then I'm going to show you a couple of the materials that we use in Day in Sacramento that I'm always, always I'm happy to share with programs who may schedule visits in their district. Um, at any point in time where you feel you want to interrupt and ask, ask questions, please do so. Um, you can use the chat feature, which I think looks like a question mark on your screen maybe, um, or raise your hand. Um, it may take me a minute to notice it because I'm both running the webinar and running a PowerPoint, but um, I promise to make sure to ask for questions at the end. And you also, also can always email LAC staff with questions. Um, I'm the main staff or the lead staff for our advocacy projects, including our legislative advocacy. But you can also reach out to Lauren Klein, our directing attorney, or Zach Newman, our research attorney. Um, the three of us make up the advocacy team at LAC. So let's get started. After my computer, there we go. Okay. So here's uh, just a, a quick little look at some of our past photos that we took that day in Sacramento this year and some of the feedback from our volunteers. Um, day in Sacramento this past year, we took about 30 attorneys from across the state to Sacramento to meet with legislators. Um, I believe last year, which was our first year, we took about 40 attorneys from around the state. Um, and here's, I think you see a, at the bottom right corner, you see Assemblymember Mark Stone giving the welcome address um, Mark Stone is the chair of the Assembly Judiciary Committee, and he's been a great partner to Legal Aid in the Capitol, so um, we were very honored to have him give our welcome. Um, but I just wanted to show how a lot of us go to Sacramento to do all these um, talks about the importance of legal aid and funding legal aid, but really you don't have to go to Sacramento to do these, um, to, to build these relationships. You can do it in your district. So a quick background on life's advocacy, the goals of the day in, of day in Sacramento, which is actually the same as goals to, of the district visits, um, step one, step two, step three for the meetings, and then other resources. So our advocacy, LAC's top advocacy priority is always to increase your funding so that you can serve more clients in your communities. Um, and of course, we hope to increase your funding so that you can recruit and re retain your qualified attorneys so you're not churning new attorneys every year. We think it's important to have um, stable workforces so you have that institutional knowledge which you can only do with stable funding. Uh, budget advocacy definitely works. Um, so what's really interesting in the history of funding for legal aid is you get a lot of these really great ideas for stable funding when there's a crisis in funding of legal aid. Um, so if we went back further on this arrow, um, we would see that when um, you know, Ronald Reagan became president, he was really threatening the funding of the Legal Services Corporation, multiple times you know, tried to zero fund legal services corporation. And at about that exact same time was when states across the country created IOLTA as a revenue source. Um, that was actually a very stable funding source in California for quite a long time. But there are a couple of economic downturns. And one of the economic downturns in the 90s, I think, probably was the catalyst for the Equal Access Fund, which was created in 1999 um, by our then Chief Justice Ron George as a stable funding of $10 million for legal aid in the judicial branch budget. That was stable, and some would say stagnant, at $10 million up until 2017 when we did budget advocacy with many of you to increase that funding. It was first increased by $5 million as a one-time increase, and then we got it increased um, as a $10 million increase, uh, again, as, as not permanent funding. But just this past legislative cycle, we got that $10 million increase to be ongoing. So our budget advocacy works. We get um, really great results. We doubled the general fund support for legal aid although it's quite modest, from $10 million to $20 million, but that was largely due to the relationships that were built in Sacramento from partners like you. So goals for the day in Sacramento and also goals for district visits, it's really to educate legislators about what you do, um, especially the legislators that aren't lawyers. 
I think many people assume you have a right to an attorney um, because of what they see on TV. And as they become legislators, they understand that's not necessarily true, but they don't understand where and when you would have access to an attorney and, and what the funding sources for those attorneys are. And many of them really don't realize that they actually have the power to increase your budget and to actually increase services to their constituents in their district. So we want to help make sure legislators understand the importance of your work. And the best way to do that is tell specific stories about you and your organization's work and, um, of course, establish those key relationships so that when they have questions about services to low-income people, they come back to you. And, of course, if you'd like to engage in any budget advocacy, which you don't have to do in district visits, but if it's a, um, you know, a relevant topic at that moment in time, reach out to LAC staff and we'll give you the talking point. And if you are allowed to lobby, you can lobby on your organization's bills. Um, if you are an LSC-funded organization, please do not lobby unless you check with your executive director. For the most part, LSC-funded organization staff may not lobby on a bill. It's a federal restriction unless you have a specific invitation to comment on that bill from the legislator that you're talking with or writing a letter to, or if it's directly impacting your funding. That's a carve-out because, of course, the federal government would love for you to get funding from the state government um, for, legal, for you know, your own funding. But, um, but again, if you are staff at an LSC-funded organization, I would encourage you to talk to your executive director before you um, establish any relationships with legislative staff to make sure that you're tracking your time appropriately, even if it is um, perfectly appropriate behavior. And why do relationships matter? Um, you know, we work to build relationships with legislators and leadership and in key committees. So, you know, if, if you ask me, if Assemblymember Mark Stone or Senator Hannah Beth Jackson is familiar with your issues, the answer is yes. They very much know your issues. They are the respective chairs of each house's Senate um, and Assembly Judiciary Committees. Um, but we don't establish really great relationships with the legislators who are not on those committees. It's simply too, much, too many people to have relationships with, and some of them turn over after a few years. So um, the one time where it really does matter is when votes come up when we need a two-thirds vote. And for example, right now, there's a very important bill that will be a two-thirds vote in both houses to increase funding for legal aid. So AB 330, this is a bill by Assemblymember Jesse Gabriel down in Los Angeles County. Um, this is an expansion of the Sergeant Shriver Civil Council Act pilot project. Right now, there's funding in about nine counties for increased civil representation under this one source of funding. And Assemblymember Gabriel is hoping to more than double that source of funding, which if that happens, we of course need a two-thirds vote, but it will en enable programs to perhaps open up new Shriver pilot projects and expand the existing programs. Um, so this is one where it's all hands on deck. You'll, your leadership and your organization will definitely see some emails from me with a template letter, um, because when we need two-thirds vote, you know, every single vote counts. So prepare for the meeting. So to get a meeting in the district office, you just call the district office and ask when the legislator is next in the district. Typically, the legislators are in, are in the district on Friday of every week. Sometimes they're in on Thursday, depending on what committees they are in and whether or not their committee is meeting. But they're typically in the district on Friday. Um, and if you can't get a meeting with the legislator, the next best is with the district lead. Um, but schedule it when the legislator is in the office, because you have a pretty good chance of the legislator stop, stopping in. Um, to prepare for the meeting, make sure you pack your business cards and any pamphlets on the organization. Um, what we don't do for Day in Sacramento is bring clients because there's so much running around the day of. We really try to focus on having attorneys tell the client stories. But I think it is especially important when you're doing district visits to bring along some client voices because they're the constituents so, um, who, you know, who are benefiting from your services. So talk to some clients who you think are especially um, comfortable and, and won't be too nervous about talking with legislators or their staff and bring them along. It's a great way to also recognize your clients who've really stood up and done uh, you know, so much additional work if they are you know, some of your clients in your impact cases or clients who you think are especially um, you know, interested in supporting your work because you've helped them so much. So prepare one to two personal stories that show the importance of how more legal aid funding can lead to better client services. It also helps um, for you to ask to know which of your projects are funded by the Equal Access Fund. Um, that's the, the biggest source of funding that legislators have control over. And if you ask your executive director or your chief financial officer, they should know what are the projects or which of the attorneys are funded by Equal Access Fund. 
And other, just expectations for the meeting. There's going to be last minute changes. Um, you may be meeting with people who don't know about your work. Um, you may be meeting with uh, a junior staffer, but I can't tell you how many times I've had a meeting with a junior staffer and then their boss just comes in the door. And so I, you know, I typically actually have pretty casual meetings, but as soon as the legislator's in the office, I make sure that I'm you know, on point for all my talking points. Um, and you may never know when a junior staffer may actually be staffing the legislator on all of the you know, budget issues or all of the health and human service issues. Um, so a lot of projects may be funneled through a junior staffer, so please always, of course, treat them with respect and treat them that they, you know, they may be the funnel to getting your issue before a legislator. Oh, one thing too, um, when we have had meetings today in Sacramento, we provide something called a legislator, um, you know, legislator tip sheet, which I'll show you at the end of this webinar, but um, which we say, you know, points about the legislator, how they've been supportive legal aid in the past, or what are their bills for low-income Californians. So we do provide additional support for legislator research, but if you're meeting with staff, we don't, you know, Google stock a staff member because we just never know that person may actually change. So, um, so don't expect that level of research on the staff, but we do that for legislators, and I'll show that see that at the end of this. So conducting a meeting, be prompt, prompt and patient, keep it short and focused, provide personal and very local examples, and don't be afraid to say, I don't know. If they say, oh, you know, do you, does your organization do such and such, and since it's not your area, you don't know, just totally say, I don't know, and I'll look into it and get back to you. Um, and also ask if you can follow up with our capital staff if you have any policy or budget advocacy pieces. And it would be great to have, you know, an introduction from the district staff to capital staff for you to have a phone call or meeting with capital staff. And then after your meeting, we would love to have your follow-up notes. Um, we have a legislator meeting summary sheet I'll show you after this presentation, which we would love for you to fill out. Um, but generally, we, we just want to know, you know, was the legislator or their staff interested and receptive? Were they asking you about issues that your organization doesn't cover but other organizations may? Um, and then also send thank yous. Always thank the legislator and their staff for their time. That could be a quick email, or if you met with a legislator, I encourage you to send um, a you know, paper card by mail. And then what I love to do, because this makes the staff members' lives a bit easier, is when you send an email to a staff person, summarize the key points of what you talked about. So say, you know, for example, we talked about Bay Area Legal Aid um, services to um, homeless youth. And I really appreciated your comments about um, early interventions in, in childhood education. Um, and the main reason why is because if they are working on a bill in the future with homeless youth or on early childhood interventions and education issues, um, and, and they decide to search their email, then you'll pop up. And they may reach out to you just because they've done a quick email search to see who has emailed them on this topic before. So I just think it's great to get it in writing with all the technology today. Um, they may not still have their paper notes from their conversation with you, but they can search their email. And if you had a request you know, to support funding for you or to support a bill, make sure you just remind that in writing. And here's some other resources. Um, California Association of Nonprofits is a fantastic organization um, quite a bit larger than LAC. Um, they represent you know, tens of thousands of nonprofits here in California. I think last I checked, they had over 20,000 members. Um, and so they have um, you know, a full-time legislative director and a lobbyist based in Sacramento. And they have just really great resources and they track a lot of bills that impact all nonprofits. So if you want to do a little bit more looking into um, legislative work, I would encourage you to check out their resources. Alliance for Justice is a national organization that focuses on um, advocacy. One of their projects, which you may know of, is around judicial nominations, but they have a project called Boulder Advocacy, which is encouraging nonprofits to lobby, um, you know, if they're able to and under restrictions, um, for the benefit of low-income people throughout the country. So the Boulder Advocacy Project has great materials, including California-specific materials on how to track your time. So if you are an executive director of a small program and you want to do a little bit more lobbying, but you want to make sure you've got all the right papers filed with the IRS, um, Boulder Advocacy is a great project to get um, a toolkit and lists and, and um, links to all the appropriate forms. They also have a, one California-specific toolkit that I believe is something like 100 pages that I found incredibly helpful when we started increasing our lobbying. And always ask us for help. So, um, while you think of questions, which of course, you, of course you can use your chat box, I am going to pull up the other resources I wanted to show you. So one of them is 
general talking points. We have these general talking points, um, which if you want me to send this to you, I can, but I also will send it to anyone upon request before you have a meeting. These are just general talking points that we use each day for day in Sacramento. You know, thank you for your support to increase funding to legal aid. Uh, equal access fund allows us to do blah, blah, blah. Funding legal services is critically important right now. So we update this every year, and we can update it also mid-year if you have a day and district um, planned with some of your clients or your junior staff. So that's our talking points. We also have, this, this is a very, very um, cheat sheet of, are you an attorney at an LSC funded organization? So the focus of the day in Sacramento and the focus of the day's uh, visits in the district is on legislator education, not on lobbying. Um, so I have information here about lobbying. And then just a little bit here about what is lobbying? Am I lobbying today? And just clarifying what is lobbying and what is not lobbying. Because I think you can have you know, dozens of hours of conversations with a legislator and none of it be lobbying if you're just talking about what's happening in their um, district and what's happening to low-income con constituents who, um, who they represent. If you're just doing education and you're not talking about any specific bill or proposed bill and you're not urging them to take action, you can have education that is not lobbying. There. Um, another resource that I like to share with folks is the, um, this is just a PDF that we print. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. This is the funding sheet. So if you want to do any budget advocacy on um, Equal Access Fund, we have a sheet here that says, you know, the justice gap, you know, how many people have a legal problem, people are not getting the help they need, we don't have enough legal aid attorneys for the low-income Californians who need it, and then where are we compared to other states that fund any legal aid. And the last resource, I have two more resources to show you. One of them is, um, this is the legislator um, talking point that I mentioned earlier. I'm showing you the one for Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. She's down in Santa Barbara County. And we provide this, so we have the district telephone number, we have um, the capital number, you know, two district offices. Some legislators may have multiple different um, district offices if their district is large. We include the chief of staff, the legislative director, and the scheduler. So the scheduler is a person who you'd want to contact um, either by email or you could call and get a meeting with the legislator. We also include a district map, and we just think it's really helpful to see in one document the district map and who has offices in their district. And then we include the relevant committee roles of that legislator. And then we have a few little talking points here about the district poverty rate. Um, and moving down, um, past bills that have been really great for low-income Californians and some helpful background info. So we do this for, I think this year we had about 35 of them done. And if you're meeting with a legislator who we have this worked up already, we are, of course, happy to share it with you. If you're meeting with a legislator who we don't have one of these done already, we can help you gather that information, even if we don't put it into a PDF for you. Because this just is a Word document where we dump everything there and make it look nice. Um, and the last thing is just after a meeting, we would love to have a legislator meeting summary. You don't have to be as formal as this, but this is what we have for Day in Sacramento. We essentially want to know, you know, who you met with and whether or not the meeting felt um, you know, productive, whether they were receptive, and some general issues discussed. You can drop that in an email to me at any time. So those are all the resources. Um, and Lauren Klein is here in the office with me. I'm going to ask if she has anything else to add. Nope, I think that covers it. Um, I just want to reiterate that we are very happy to help you with any part of the process of getting visits set up in your district. So please don't hesitate to, re to reach out to us. So um, thank you so much. I'll wait one more second in case anyone pops up with a question, but I don't see any. So yeah, definitely if you have any questions. Oh, I see one. Um, so I see a hand raised. What you'll need to do is use the chat box or the question box to ask the question. So for so, oh, I see it right here. Um, oh, so if you want to get the materials, my email address is always available on our website, but it's, and I should have put it on this PowerPoint presentation, it's S. Copeland, so S-C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D, at lacconline.org, and that's L-A-A-C, online.org. Um, and you also, if, if you ever need any of these materials or you can't find my email address, you can email any LAC staff at all, and they'll, they'll get you what you need. 
And if I remember to today, before I uh, close out this work and turn to my next project, I will try to send all the materials to all of you who attended today, too. Um, so thank you so much for participating in this, you know, Visits in the District webinar. Um, feel free, once I, once I put this recording online, I will also send you the link, and you can feel free to share it with your coworkers who weren't able to make it. So thanks, and good luck. Hopefully you'll have some district meetings soon.